you know, for the eight people passed away. I think, and they always talk yeah, about Travis the situation. Yeah, Travis Scott with, Afterworld, yeah. Right. You know, you got certain situations in hip-hop. But like you said, for the most part in the Freak League, you know, it was never anything major tragic. Um, every Freak League I've been to was always successful, you know. Yeah, now, you know, now and going you know, on like, for a minute. And I was saying now, you know, switching gears for a minute. And this was around the time where you guys was putting out your debut album, the GP Wu album. Now, what? Uh, now, what? 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 Curious minds want to know because you know you guys you put out a dope product out there and then after that it's just like nothing else followed up. Well, in a nutshell, um, when we had signed to MCA, uh, Download Records, Rubber Bands, June Lover, and myself, we we were very hard at being GP the Green. We wanted to have our own identity, and at the last minute, uh, Hank Shockley <clears throat> decided that he wanted to call us GP Wu, and that never really stood good with with the with the group. Um, we we mm-hmm. never wanted to be G, we never wanted to be GP Wu. Wu. We always wanted to be GP mm-hmm. the Grain. But I think once he under, once he heard the the history and that you know us as GP, um, he's like, don't go against we, the grain. Yeah, once us GP like the grain. Once he understood that, you know that GP and Wu Tang really had it start out in Stapleton. He kind of took it. You know, he took it. I always felt like Hank Shockley and and RZA uh, had a good new relationship. You got to remember they had did All I Need, you know, Meth and Mary, which was a Grammy winning song. So. You know, I right. think in hindsight, Hank Shockley wanted to wanted GP to do or get a lot of um, you know beats from RZA, and we were kind of reluctant to do so. And so, with that being said, it wasn't like his his G, his Wu Tang part of the deal wasn't following through. And you know, he kind of was reluctant. He kind of just told us like, you know, y'all could do the second album, but. We're not going to be heavily supportive of it. So, me, I was just more or less like, well, if you're not going to support it, you might as well just drop us. I'm not going to do an album. You know, we gave you a hot album because we always felt like they fumbled the ball with that. They didn't give us the greatest support. And, you know, MCA was more of an R&B label. We just figured that, you know, with that star power that they had, if they would have gave GP a, 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 a solid a solid effort and shot instead of, you know, shuffling their feet, it could have been a beautiful thing. You know, individuals at that time definitely um, had uh, had the hunger to, to be competitive in the game. You know, we definitely thought we felt, uh, brought something different to the table at that time as well. Definitely, uh, Pop, and that guy. You know, but but segue. but you know, right. okay. but just the, the, you know, not to cut you off, but I think just the fact that, you know, after we did the first album and we didn't get too much of a great support, and then it was, you know, kind of like, you know, back then we knew what being a tax write off and all of this was, and I didn't know I didn't want to go through the ringer with this with this conglomerate. It would have been beautiful if he would have came and said, you know, we'll be supportive and we're gonna you know, push these singles and we're going to, you know, make it happen. But <laughs> I, I think that, uh, you know, the course, the course ran itself. Definitely pop. And, um, one thing about that's a perfect segue for the next question. We wanted to ask you, what did you learn in the aspect 